So we left off last time with this uh, problem, and it uh, was in uh, kind of a long-winded uh, verbiage form, but basically the gist of it was we had this 8-kilowatt source, I mean, excuse me, this 8-kilowatt load. It was uh, running at a 0.8 power factor lagging, and uh, the voltage across the leads was 240 volts RMS. And we went through uh, some processes we recognized with the power triangle that uh, we knew the real power, that was just flat given at 8 kilowatts. And then because they gave the uh, power factor, we knew that the uh, power factor was equal to the cosine of the uh, impedance angle. So if I set this equal to 0 0.8, it allowed me to come up with the impedance angle was 36.87. So you get that angle right there. And it allowed you to get Q with the tangent function or the arc tangent function, or actually the tangent function. And we then uh, came up, we turned this power problem into a trig problem and came up with that answer. And I would refer you to the notes from last time for that. Then we uh, spent a little time deriving this uh, equation here or proving this equation or demonstrating that equation and uh, used that to come up with the impedance. We wanted to try and find out what the impedance of this thing was and we used that equation to get that. And that's about where we stopped last time and I said, well, there's another way to do it. It may not be completely as obvious, but if you don't remember this equation or you're uncomfortable using it, it's another way of doing it. So I go back to our equation where the average power is equal to VRMS times IRMS times your power factor. Basically, the apparent power times your power factor. And I rearrange that like we've done in the past, solving for IRMS that's equal to the power divided by VRMS divided by the power factor. So I put the power, that was 8,000 watts from the given there. And then uh, 240 volts RMS in the power factor, and we come up with uh, 41.67 amps. So we know the current down here, at least I know the magnitude of that current in RMS form is equal to 41.67 amps RMS. But what is the, uh, the current in magnitude angle form? Well, that's a little trickier. I could say then that I RMS is equal to, we know the magnitude, 41.67, but there's some angle that's attached to it. And they didn't tell us the angle on the voltage, but let's take it as zero. Let's take it as a reference of zero. And then we know because this is lagging that it's inductive, isn't it? So when we think of inductive, we think of what? Eli? Okay, so if I go and draw a phasor diagram for this thing, where I have the real and the imaginary, if the voltage is 240 at zero, there would be my voltage phasor, wouldn't it? Right on the uh, horizontal axes. And now if uh, the current is, is the uh, voltage E is leading the uh, current, so where's the current going to be? Current has to be somewhere down here, doesn't it? Yeah. For this to be inductive. And this angle in here is going to be what? Theta sub Z. So if our voltage, if our V RMS were to be expressed as 240 at zero, then our current would have to be what? 41.67. We got the magnitude there. Hopefully that's not in debate. But the angle is going to be a negative 36.87. Where'd that 36.87 come from? Well, it came from the fact that the power factor is equal to 0 0.8. So again, if the voltage had a zero phase angle, I know because it's inductive, because it's lagging, that the current has to be down there, that the current has to have a negative number. Okay, this is because it is lagging. So now that I have the current, and for that matter, I have the voltage, I could say that the impedance Z is going to be equal to the voltage divided by the current. We've done this many times. So I take uh, 240 at 0, and I divide by this uh, 41.67 at minus 36.87. And what do I come up with? I think I got a number for this, uh, 5.76 at an angle of positive, because I'm going to have 0 minus a minus, so it'll be positive, 36.87. Now we expect that angle to be positive, don't we? Because it's inductive. 
So had I made a mistake here and, 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 and left this positive, this would have become negative and we would have then thought it was a capacitor, which does that work with a lagging power factor? Oh, we'd know we were wrong. Well, if I convert this into a uh, rectangular form, you'll get uh, 4.606, I think, plus J. You get plus because the angle is positive, 3.458 ohms. So we come up with virtually the, the same answer. A little more work, a little more having to be careful with this angle here, uh, but you don't have to use this equation. So lots of ways to do these power problems. Unfortunately, there's lots of wrong ways too. So that's our task today is to sort out the right from the wrong. Questions with that? So just a different twist on the previous problem. We've answered all these things on the previous problem, but I wanted to do it a little differently here. There's one thing that I'd like to uh, bring out is I think we found that impedance there to be that uh, 4.606 plus J 3.458. And if I write that out, we know that it's resistive and inductive, right? So what if someone uh, comes along? We have this voltage here, don't we? There's voltage, and that's RMS. And what if someone were to tell us the current, I RMS? I mean, I think we actually even have that, don't we? Uh, that was uh, 41.67 at an angle of minus 36.87. Now, if we wanted to find the, the, the power, we could, uh, we've got all kinds of possibilities for express, uh, uh, power. We could say that power, the average power, was equal to V RMS times I RMS times the uh, cosine of theta minus V, right? That'd be one way of doing it. I mean, you'd put your uh, 240 in here, you'd put your 41.67, you'd have your cosine of the angle of the voltage, zero, minus the angle of the current, so that would be a positive 36.87. Okay. That would be fine. Let's see, what's that turn out to be? I sure hope it's 8 kilowatts. Yeah, 8,000. Good. Now, another way we could do it is we could say that uh, the average... the average is equal to, I like, uh, what, uh, I RMS squared times R. Will that work? Let's try that. So we've got uh, 41.67. I square that, and I multiply by, what's the resistor? 4.608. Let's try that number. I get 8,001. That sounds like about 8,000. Okay, so so far so good. Now, could we, uh, you know, we've always uh, had uh, several power equations. Let's try this one. V RMS squared divided by R. That should work, shouldn't it? And in fact, that does work, but the next step here, I'm going to misapply it. And you'll see, I'll, uh, see if you can uh, see where I made the mistake. If I take 240, I square this, and I divide by 4.608, what answer do you get? You're not going to get 8,000. I hope you don't get 8,000. 12.5. Hmm. What did I do wrong? Yeah. Well, the the resistance of the inductor would probably be lumped into this. I mean, the problem here is that this 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 current equation, this one worked really well, and as far as that goes, this there's no problem with that equation. This equation here worked really well because the current goes through both of them. But if I was going to use this voltage here, what voltage would it have to be? <coughs> Yeah, it would have to be that voltage there, wouldn't it? 
So we would have to take this out and have the voltage across the resistor squared, which sometimes is not that easy to find. I mean, you have to use voltage division, right? You can get it with voltage division. You can go through that. I'm not going to go through that. But that's probably why we use this one more than we use this one because the current goes through both of them. The voltage, oftentimes, you have to divide it out. So be very careful of that. If you're just uh, playing around with these, you probably won't get the same answer unless you're very careful of the voltage that you use. Everyone follows that? Let's try another example here. We've got a uh, load requiring 40 kilowatts at 0.84 power factor lagging. We have a lot of lagging power factor problems because that's uh, typically motor problems. That's what we have a lot of. Inductive motors are great. They have a lot of torque, but they have a lot of inductance. The uh, 60 hertz, 220 volts RMS line voltage at the load is supplied through a line with um, impedance as given. So let's put this into a picture. Take a quite a bit less than a thousand words and uh, summarize it with a picture. So I have this uh, load, 40 kilowatts. And now when someone says 40 kilowatts, you start be thinking, oh, that's real power. That's average power. That's the horizontal portion of my power triangle, isn't it? We're told that this is uh, 60 hertz. We're told that this is 0.84 lagging. OK, and we've got a couple lines going into this thing. And what do we have on these lines? We've got a uh, resistor and we've got an inductor. And this is 0.1 and this is J0.25. Now let's see. The 60 hertz 220 voltage at the load. So we have the voltage here that's 220 at 0 volts RMS. So that's at the load. So we'd like to find the real and reactive power required. So how much power do we have to supply? That's what we're looking for. Okay, We have to certainly supply the power of the load. Okay, There's no free lunches there. But we're also going to have to supply the power that's lost at this line, right? So let's see if we can do that. Um, if I could come up with both P and Q for the load and P and Q for the line, add them together and we'd get P and Q for the source, we'd have S for the source, we'd be done, wouldn't we? So let's see, for the load, what could we say for the load? I have 40 kilowatts here. And let's see, if it's lagging, I know that it's inductive, so I'll draw my power triangle something like this. There's Q for the load. That's going to be a right angle. This angle here, theta, can I get that? Yeah, I know that that theta is equal to what? Arc cosine of the power factor, right? Because I know the cosine of theta is equal to the power factor, so the arc cosine of the power factor e gives me theta, so that turns out to be equal to 32.86. I'll just say 32.9. So I got 32.9 degrees. So I could say then that uh, Q, therefore, Q for the load would be equal to 40K. I won't write watts. I'll just write 40K times the tangent of that theta. So I'll put that theta right down in there. Multiply that by 40K. And we get, what, 25.8K bars, right? K bars. So I now know the this is the power for the load. I know the Q for the load. If I find the power for the uh, line and the Q for the line, the P for the line and the Q for the line, I should be set, shouldn't I? 
Let's see, can I come up with a current for the line? Yeah, why not? IRMS would be equal to uh, what? P divided by VRMS times the power factor. Could I use that? Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and take uh, 40,000 divided by 240 and a power factor of 0.84 and that gives me a number should be do I have am I 220 or 240 220 so this had better be 220 So, what did I come up with? Uh, 216 and a half amps RMS. I don't know the angle. I do know the magnitude. I mean, I could go back with the, the previous argument. If we've taken this uh, voltage at zero, that would be at a negative. Uh, 32.9, but I don't really need that um, because I'm going to say that the power in the line that I lose, I could say that was I RMS squared times R, couldn't I? Where I take this 216.5, I square that, and I multiply it by 0 0.1. That's the resistance of the line. So I get uh, 46.85 or 4.685 kilowatts. Could I talk about Q for the line? Yeah, I R M S. I is handy because it goes through both. Whatever current goes through the resistor is going to go through the inductor. I square that and I multiply it by what? X. Okay. The imaginary portion. So that's going to turn out to be what? 216.5 squared times what? 0.25? I go up and find this. Turns out to be what? 11.7 kilobars. So what do I have to uh, supply? I can say that the supply is going to be equal to what? This number plus that number. 44.685. I have too many significant figures but you know where it comes from. Plus J then I'm going to take what? This number here, 25.8 and 11.7. What do I get there? 36, 30, 37.5? Okay. And this whole thing would be K. We're definitely in the K. And we've got the watts here and the VARs. So what's this thing? Volt amps, right? So again, things are conserved. What we are using in the load plus what we lose in the line has to be what we supply. Questions on that one? I got another one. This one we can spend some time on. Bank of induction motors consumes 64 kilowatts at 0.68 lagging power factor. 60 hertz line voltage is 240, zero VRMS. And we're asked what value of capacitance must be added to the improve the power factor. So again, a picture. We've got this load here. We've got the uh, line voltage. What they say that was uh, 240 at zero volts RMS and we have uh, 64 
kilowatts, it's a real number, horizontal portion of the power triangle, 0.68, the lagging, 60 hertz, and we would like to improve this, we're going to go to try and go to 0.92 lagging, it's still going to appear inductive, it's just not going to appear so inductive. And the question is, we, we add a capacitor here. Sometimes the question comes up, well, where in the world would you add the capacitor? Well, what do you think about adding the capacitor right here? Does that seem like a good plan? Well, then we'd have a situation where we have a voltage drop. I mean, if I add a capacitor like this and have the uh, load then here, am I going to get 240 volts across my load? No, because I'm going to have voltage drop across the capacitor. So that doesn't make sense. Uh, does it make sense then to put the capacitor in parallel? That would be better, right? Yeah, because we don't then have a volt. The voltage across things in parallel is the same. So we're going to put this capacitor in here. Like this. And we'd like to figure out what value of capacitance I have to add to that. I'm going to show you a couple ways to do this. Uh, probably the easy way that may be kind of hard to wrap your mind around, and then maybe the more mechanical way that's going to lead to some really fairly involved algebra. So this is a power problem. Let's draw a power triangle here. So if I talk about the old triangle, what's that going to be? I'm going to have something that looks like this. I know it's inductive. This is 64 kilowatts, right? And if I take the arc cosine, as far as that goes, why don't I just take the arc cosine of 0.68, and that gives me uh, 47.2. Uh, I'll say 47.2. And while I got the arc cosine button warmed up, I'll do the arc cosine of the new value, 0.92, which is going to be what? Less than 23. So I now know that if this, this is the old one, remember? This is the new. So I know with my old power triangle that this angle in here is 47.2. So that makes it pretty easy to find Q, right? Q is going to be equal to the tangent of... 47.2 times 64K, which gives me 69K bars. Now let me try the new. I'll keep these separated. So with the new, my triangle, and I'll try and draw it to a bit of scale. It's not going to be perfectly to scale. But it's going to look like this. It's going to have a way smaller Q because this angle is 23.1. This is still 64K kilowatts. So I can say that this Q here now is going to be equal to the tangent of 23.1 times 64K, which gives me 27 point three K bars. So the difference between those is the Q for the capacitor, which of course would be negative, wouldn't it? So I can say then, so Q for the capacitor is going to be equal to 69 minus 27.3, which gives me 41.3. Seven K bars. Okay. And do we know what Q for the capacitor would be? Now let's see. Do I have the voltage across here? This is one of these cases where the, knowing the voltage across here, I know the voltage across there, don't I? So I could say that Q. For the capacitor, 
is going to be equal to VRMS squared divided by X for the capacitor, right? So I'm going to say that 41.7 times 10 to the 3, because it's K bars, is going to be equal to, we said 240 squared divided by whatever x sub c is. So I can solve for x sub c, it turns out to be 1.38. Okay. To find the difference between these two? Because that's how much q the capacitance has to be? Okay. Because the Q for the capacitor, if you add this Q for the capacitor, which happens, is going to be a negative number. Right? I mean, I, I haven't shown the negatives here, but this really would be a, a negative. Because, I mean, if you look at the power triangle for the capacitor, it's going to look like this, isn't it? Okay. So I really probably should have put a negative here, and this would have come up with a negative, because this is really equal to what? 1 over omega C, right? And if I had a negative here, then I would have a negative there. Well, we recognize it's going to be negative, so I didn't bother putting the negative in there. So now I could say that omega turns out to be what? With 60 hertz, that's 377. So what does C turn out to be? If you run through the numbers, you get 1.92 milli with a little m farads. So that's the value of the capacitor that you'd have to put on there. So basically you're trying to add triangles. You're trying to add this triangle here and this triangle here to get back to the original or the old triangle. And I think you've got a homework problem that, that emphasizes that too. Well, once you step back, it's, it's fairly easy. Um, it's certainly quick once you get comfortable with it. A method that might be a little easier to think about but it's not going to be so quick is to look at, well, what's happening at the impedance level? You'll notice I didn't talk anything about the impedance. If someone asked me, well, what's the resistance of the load or what's the reactance of the load, I have no idea. I concentrated at the, the power level with the power triangles. Well, let me talk. What's that? Mm -hmm. This one here? Yes. This equation? Well, it comes from the same place that, I mean, if you wanted to talk about the uh, power for a resistor, because that's the average power for a resistor, that would be equal to uh, V RMS squared divided by R, wouldn't it? Yeah. Same place. Okay. Uh, I guess if you had a, uh, a, a situation where you had a leading power factor and you wanted to add inductance, yeah, you could do that. For, the, for that negative you were talking about, that's, it doesn't just come out with the math. That's something you have to infer because of what we know about its base. Yeah, because, I mean, how if I am at 69, am I going to get to 27? I actually have to add a negative. So this would be negative, then this is negative which makes that negative, and then that's negative. But since, it, since we're doing a capacitor, I, I say, well, it's all negative, so I stop right the negative signs. Yeah. I'm an engineer, not a math major. Yeah. But, uh, good, good questions. <clears throat> well, like I said, if we investigate this on the level of impedance, we'd have something like this, wouldn't we? where I have uh, 240 at zero across here, and that's uh, RMS. Okay. And I have some resistance and inductance, and then I've got some capacitance across there. That's basically what I have going on at the impedance level, right? So I could say that uh, this current here 
Um, is that the one I want? No, I think I want a different current. Let me, because that's going to get a little confusing. Let me talk about the current through here. Okay, so I'm going to talk about that current, and that's going to be RMS. So I could say that uh, I RMS, the value of that current, is going to be equal to the power divided by V RMS times the power factor. We've been down that road before. What was the uh, power for this thing? It was 64,000. And our voltage is uh, 240. And the power factor initially, we'll, do, we'll go with the initial case, 0.68. So that gives me a number here that is uh, 392.16 amps RMS. Okay, I could talk about this current then as a phaser. That's going to be equal to 392.16 at an angle of, if my voltage is zero, so my voltage is equal to 240 at zero, then the current has to be what? 392.16 and it had better be a negative. And do we have the angle? Yeah, 47.2, right? That came from here when we had these. 47.2. So it's negative 47.2. So minus 47.2. So I can say with those two pieces that the impedance of the load is equal to the voltage divided by the current, which is going to be 240 at zero, divided by 392.16 at minus 47.2. And this turns out to be equal to 0.612 at 47.16. I, I, I guess I switched. I, I'll, I better be consistent there on you. Okay, 47.2. You'll notice because of the, the math here, this became a positive number, which inductive it should. That's good. When I turn this into a rectangular number, 0 0.4161 plus J. 0 0.448. It's pretty close to 45 degrees. We'd expect them both to be about the same. That's good. So this is the resistance of the load, and this is the X sub L for the load. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to look at this thing and I'm going to talk about the total impedance for this whole thing. And I have two branches, don't I? They're going to be in parallel, so I'm going to say that it's product over sum. So I'm going to say J X sub C times R sub L plus J X sub L divided by R sub L plus J times X sub L plus X sub C. You okay with that? Now we say, well, shouldn't X sub C be negative? Well, when we make our substitution here, this X sub C is going to be minus 1 over omega C. Whereas when I substitute in for this, we're going to have positive omega L. So I'll have to make that substitute that negative in later. Well, what I can do on this is if I go through the math on this, let's see, what will I have? If I multiply this out, I get uh, J times RL times X sub C minus X sub C times X sub L. Is that right? because that would be j squared, which is a minus 1. Then I'm going to divide this by rl plus j xl 
plus xc. And remember that this is, this is a complex number. This is the impedance. This has some magnitude at some angle theta. So I'd like to come up with the theta from this. What's the theta for that equal to? Well, if I find the angle here, what's that angle going to be? The arc tangent of the... Because if I plot this on the real and the Im imaginary, you go out here on the real, then you go out there on your imaginary, you plot it. So I'll put the uh, imaginary portion, RL x sub c, divided by the real portion, minus x sub c, x sub l. And then the denominator has an angle too, and I subtract those because when I divide, I subtract. So I'm going to say minus the arc tangent of the imaginary portion, x sub l plus x sub c, divided by r sub l. And what does that have to equal? Yeah, we could set this equal to 23.1, couldn't we? And then do we know x sub l? Yeah, there's your x sub l. So we'd put in a value there. Do we know x sub c? No, nope, that's an unknown. Do we know x sub l? Yeah, we know x sub l. We could put in a value there. Do we know x sub l there? Yep, put in a value. Do we know r sub l? Yep, put in a value there. So we have one equation and we could solve for x sub c. And if you go through that carefully, you're going to come up with the same answer. You're going to come up with 1.38, the same as we had before. But this, there's a lot more work this way than if you just look at the triangles. <coughs> Well, I have one more question that I wanted to look at, and I don't think we have time to go clear through it, but I'll, I'll, I'll look at it very quickly. You have it for reference. It's homework number 22. After our work today, if I want to talk about this current here, I1, or I want to talk about this current here, I2, those are fairly easy to get to, aren't they? What's the magnitude of I1 going to be? Thirty-six thousand, because the load is thirty thirty-six kilowatts divided by the voltage, two forty, and what's the power factor? 0 0.82. So you can come up with a magnitude there. What's the angle? Well, if this is zero, this is our reference, and this is lagging. What's it going to be? Minus the arc cosine of 0.82, isn't it? So you can put this piece here and that piece there and come up with I1. What about I2? What's the magnitude of I2? Well, 48 kilowatts, so 48,000, divided by, again, 240. What's our power factor? 0.88. So that'll get you a magnitude. Can you come up with the angle? Minus, because it's lagging. Minus the arc cosine. Sorry, that should be the arc cosine. Of what? 0.88. Okay. So that's how in the uh, the homework problem when we said that uh, I1 turned out to be, and most people are pretty comfortable with the 182.9, uh, 
But then when we said the angle was minus 34.9, and a lot of people are, are okay with a 34.9, but it's the negative. Well, where does that come from? Well, it's because lagging. This is, of course, amps RMS. And likewise, I2, then if you go through the magnitude 227, and the angle is going to be a minus 28.4 amps RMS. So that doesn't complete that problem, but when you get I1 and I2, you can add them together to get this current here. That current is going to be I1 plus I2, and you're just about done at that point. I'd be happy to go over that on the, the review session uh, tomorrow. might be a good problem to, to do. Uh, hopefully our work today has, has made some of these steps a little easier to see. I'll leave you with that. Hopefully I'll see a lot of you at the review session. If not, I'll see you for the exam. Take care until then.